Someone once said to me that the Catholic Church was the Church of the Devil. Being Anglican, I wasn't much inclined to argue, but when I asked him what he meant by that, he asked me when my day of rest was. Naturally, that told me he was referring to the Sabbath, the day of rest given by God at the very beginning. Many believe that Sunday is the Sabbath and should be the day of rest and to go to church. However, the Jewish tradition says that the Sabbath is on Saturday, a belief shared by the Seven Day Adventist Church. This has caused division within the church and confusion amongst those who look to the church in hope of finding God. It is time to clean up this mess once and for all. Genesis, God made the world in six days, and on the seventh day he rested, and declared that day to be holy and a day of rest for all. Whilst many scholars say there is most likely day is in a period of time, ever since that day has been taken to be a time of rest and prayer. And many gather together on that day, bear God's word and praise him. As I said, according to Jewish tradition, that day is a Saturday and should be shared by all. Later, the Catholic Church changed it to a Sunday and is actually well recorded and has become a established norm for most tr Christian traditions and has become very much synonymous with the weekend. But naturally, when this debate comes up, I ask, how do we know which day of the week the Sabbath actually was? Which day was the traditional day of rest? And the Bible doesn't give us a set day of starting the week, let alone which day was the end of the week, which is the Sabbath. It only says that God worked six days and rested on the seventh. This was the basis of the week, but that was only established later, as a period of seven days after the completion of God's work. In those days, a day was considered a period of time when the sun was in the heavens, which resulted in the day varying in length depending on the season. Trying to go by other measures, the month was measured by the cycle of the moon, and the year was measured by the cycle of the season. The Babylonians tried to make moon cycles, adding extra days to the last week of the month, and that makes it hard to judge. Romans in the first century BC use an eight-day moon, with one of those days being a market day. Not only does that mess up the calendar, and therefore we can't measure which day was actually the original Sabbath, but it tells us that it wasn't a ubiquitous thing throughout human culture. It was very much a Christian thing, or at least a, an Abrahamic thing during those times. And so were the Muslims have different days of the week, but it seems like, in general, they are the same. Also worthwhile noting that the names haven't really been established at that point, because the names we're familiar with are based on the Roman names, 
supposed to think in those days. Romans use the names of gods that they had named planets after the days of the week. This is easier to see in the Romance names in French, Spanish, and Italian. You have Lundi, Mardi, Mercury, Jerdi, Vendri, Sondi, Monge, which in French, as I was speaking there, means the Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, and the Lord's Day. So many say that due to the fact that they saw the sun and the moon as stars and actual planets or whatever. Lord's Day was originally the day of the sun. This really into history of ideas of how the sun is seen as a god, but I won't get into that. What I'll mention here, though, is that in the English language, they were changed to the Manic and North traditions, hence instead of Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus, our days are named after Tyr, Odin, Thor, and Frigga. So, it's from what you can trace back to the original names, or trace back to the oldest ones. Well, if we were to take the days as they stand, and assume that Sunday and Monday were the days that God made the sun and the moon, respectively. Then you instantly find out that was on the fourth day of the week. Many people will say, hang on, the moon was technically made at night. But since day ended when it got dark, the moon was technically made, by our reckoning, on the same day. But... Due to the Jewish tradition, it was made on the fifth day. So, trace back from that. Four days from the day of the sun, traces back to, oh, it's the first day. You don't need to go any further, you just figure out one more, and you find the Sabbath is on a Wednesday. This doesn't really make any sense. And that just points out that the ambiguity of claiming celestial markers for the day, the week, is ridiculous. The lack of knowledge regarding the specifics of the first day. For some reason the microphone cut out then. I was meant to say only Christmas is occasionally on Wednesdays. Taking it back to its roots by that channel, isn't going to sort this out in way. So is there something in the texts? Tell us which day of the week the Sabbath is on. Well, the Bible does give us a reference as to the day of the Sabbath, and many of us have locked onto that and we follow it to the exact days. This comes around during the Easter story, around the time of the crucifixion. The festival of Passover is eaten by Christ and his disciples. The following day, he was crucified in the tomb. It is stated that this happened the day before the Sabbath. Since, after, since that day, no one did any work. And it's an established belief that Christ rose from the dead on Sunday. That is why it is called Resurrection Sunday. This is the only reference to the day of the Sabbath in relation to any other day of the week. Hence, it is fairly straightforward to say it's on a Saturday. Well, given two suggestions. One ridiculous suggestion of it being on a Wednesday, I like to think of the Sabbath of Woden, and there's the Christian, Christian bastardization, which makes it on a Saturday by established law. But I'm going to give you a couple more theories to really muddy the waters, just to see how it goes. 
due to the changing of calendars, the Sabbath can still be rather disputed. Thus, due to the lack of a set day at the beginning of the Sabbath, and the fact that Adam and Eve never needed to work when they were in the garden, it was never established in law when the day of rest should be, and so it wasn't given a set day until long after it was done. It might not even... In fact, I don't remember seeing this term Sabbath pop up in Genesis after chapter 3, through now to chapter 1 for that. I think it only really cropped up when Moses was writing the laws, so that's Leviticus and Deuteronomy, if I'm not correct. Double check when I do those books in the Bible project. That would have been thousands of years after that time, so you most certainly would have been forgotten. Second comes from the belief many people have that Jesus is the Sabbath. I'm not saying that technically because he rose on Sunday that means that is the Sabbath day. He is our Sabbath. In this case, it's sort of a very practical view. He was resurrected the day after the Sabbath. And odds are many people stopped working and celebrated his rebirth. Now what I meant that come the next Sabbath, if they seem to do a six-day week, they wouldn't have actually worked six full days. Since it's the hard-working people who knew the value of a good harvest, any sensible man would push on for another day until they had done all six days and then rested. Hence, changing the Sabbath because of Jesus. That most certainly isn't canon law, but I'm going to put it forward as a suggestion. This is an easy argument to understand, but not necessarily to ignore, which is what many devout Sunday Adventists and Jews would do. I do tend to question people's assumptions, that's sort of what I do, though I do not like saying that they are evil or devil worshippers. Despite this, if someone is determined to shout down our faiths in favour of their own and level hate and evil intent to those who don't follow them, then needs must where the devil drives. If someone is to level the insult that my church is evil because it doesn't follow the Sabbath, then I'd ask them these questions. Who says this is the case in your church? Who says this is the Sabbath? Who in your church is the one that preaches this is the Sabbath? Odds are they'll say the priest, the pastor, the minister or the rabbi. Basically, the person who leads the service. Thus, I would ask them, what do they do on the Sabbath? If they lead church services or worship, isn't that work? And isn't that done on the Sabbath, the day that they themselves say should be a day of rest? With this understanding, you can sort of see why the Catholic Church decided to shift it around. They quite possibly saw the conundrum, decided, just just make the edict. No point in explaining our logic. Elitists back then wouldn't have explained their logic, they would have just done it. And it would be a lot easier for the priests as well since they'd be leading celebrations on Sunday, rather than go against the Sabbath and work on the Saturday. 
And this is why the standard weekend is two days long and is generally understood to be a time of rest by many. Saturday is a day of rest, and Sunday is the day to celebrate. Granted, many people go the other way round for the sake of a good drink, but that is where I think people keep getting messed up. The Sabbath is a day of rest, because God says so. Celebration is a great thing to do, but does that have to be on the day of rest? No. Take the time to rest. Next day, go to church. Open out your hearts and basically just worship the Lord with all your strength, knowing full well you are obeying his commandments not to break the Sabbath. Well, there's one more open fact that not many people have noticed or commented on. Genesis is specific at the passing of the first six days. They say that the sun rises and the sun sets, the day ends, and we give numbers to those days. But when the seventh day rolls in, it's not said to have an end. Now I took a look. Now some apologists say that the term day is most likely used as a general stretch of time. Like we say, back in Moses' day, or back in my grandfather's day. Apologists can explain it in terms of time, and the passage of day and night would merely be a metaphor for the passing of time. It never quite explains the lack of an ending for the seventh day. This could imply that the seventh day never ended and is still going on. And it's the time scale that the day could potentially cover. This seems not only reasonable, but for many atheists might explain why God seems so inactive in this day and age compared to biblical time. He's still resting and allowing things to progress with only the occasional nudge. And to me, that just sort of implies that we're putting him in a box far more than we ever realise. So, when is the Sabbath? Like many things, we don't know for sure. As I said, it could be on a Wednesday, which strongly implies that it's more in terms of the god Woden, who is as far as I remember the god of wisdom in Germanic, for Germanic theology. Now it's Saturday, according to the biblical standards, that we only celebrate on a Sunday because it so happens to be the day after a day of rest, and so we should celebrate off the day of rest, rather than on it, and hence breaking the Sabbath. It could be that we just lost the Sabbath day because it's been shifted around so much, or even just the days of the week have been shuffled around so much that we don't know when the original first day was, let alone when the Sabbath would have been. And there's also the fact that the term day is a very loose term, and we don't know if we are currently in the Sabbath ourselves. Don't know in the way that God expected. Yes, we can question that Moses was the one that wrote the Bible, and therefore, or well, certainly Genesis, and therefore would have been aware of that, wouldn't have worried about the law specifying sevens and Sabbaths every seventh day. 
But I think regardless of what we think of when the Sabbath is, one thing we can learn is that at the very least it is clear God from the earliest times knew we couldn't work every single day. And so gave us a day of rest. He knows us better than we know ourselves. So knows that we need time to take a moment to sit down and rest. We all work odd jobs that demand different things from us. I've worked mad jobs in Australia. I worked hours from one o'clock in the morning to maybe seven o'clock in the evening. And I've also worked jobs from seven o'clock in the evening till five in the morning. So I know the full span of a day. But I know I can't do every single day. I can't work every single day. When I was on the pedicabs, I told newbies, don't work every single day. You'll end up killing yourself. Take a day and have a rest. If we all take a point, we'll take a day just to rest, lie down, lay down our load, and remember what we have to be thankful for. Then we can be more healthy in our minds, more productive, and at the end of the day, better workers than if we worked all day, every day, from our first day to our last. So whatever day you're celebrating the Sabbath on, remember that day is a day of rest. The next day is a celebration. So celebrate God and may he be with you.